The observable universe extends about 90 billion light years, and it is possible that the unobservable part of it is even larger. The cosmos is so vast that the human mind cannot comprehend its scale, although some theories suggest that it may be smaller than we think. How can this be the case? Today, we want to show you the connection between macrocosm and microcosm. According to current data, the diameter of the yet unobservable part of the universe may be about 20 trillion light years. Just imagine. This means that most of outer space is likely to remain empty given the limited amount of studied matter in our part of space. When we look out into space, we will see gigantic vast expanses of icy emptiness. But consider this, could the entire universe consist of a single atom? While this idea may seem absurd, there is nothing unreasonable about it, akin to philosophical fiction. However, before delving into this concept, let us remind you that all matter is made up of tiny particles. These tiny particles are the basis on which the universe is built in the usual sense of the word. Atoms, despite their importance, cannot be directly observed even with the most powerful optical instruments. Remarkably, we have no clear visualization of the atom, relying on scientific theories for our understanding. However, despite our inability to observe atoms in person, it is a recognized fact that atoms are composed of smaller subatomic constituents, including neutrons, protons, electrons, and quarks. It is established in modern knowledge that atoms are both numerous and negligible. The adult human body contains about seven octillion atoms, a truly staggering number. Atoms themselves have a complex internal structure, which gives rise to the incredible theory of a microuniverse. What does the inner structure of an atom resemble? From your previous chemistry courses, you likely recall that an atom comprises a nucleus composed of protons and neutrons with electrons orbiting around it. This model, conceived by Ernest Rutherford in 1911, is known as the planetary model of the atom. The analogy is quite clear, as the motion of electrons around the nucleus resembles the movement of planets orbiting the sun. This model has never been disproven and is even supported by modern research, with the caveat that electron motion should be described by the principles of quantum mechanics rather than classical mechanics. So, the fundamental building block of matter, the atom, exhibits a structure akin to our solar system. Is this resemblance purely coincidental, a consequence of the laws of physics? Or might it signify something more profound, something far more extraordinary? We'll revisit this question shortly. Meanwhile, consider this puzzling question, how many electrons exist in our universe? It may seem absurd, a number beyond the capacity of even the most powerful computer, let alone the human brain. Yet, what if I told you there's a hypothesis known as the one electron universe theory, proposed by American physicist Richard Feynman? It sounds like pure science fiction. According to this theory, there's just one electron in the entire world, moving through space and time at such a velocity that it appears to us as if there are countless electrons. A solitary particle shapes what we perceive as the entire universe. Of course, this theory was not widely supported. But the funny thing is that thanks to the principle of the identity of electrons, the impossibility of experimentally distinguishing one electron from another, it cannot be disproved. It's such a paradox. But let's return to the structure of the atom and the unusual theories it gives rise to. Let's delve deeper into the question of what determines the size of an object. Despite the everyday and familiar meaning of the word, the concept of size is actually quite mysterious and relative. Consider this. Our environment matches our size because we created it. This is not the case with nature's creations. Mountains seem huge to us. Planets reach unfathomable scales, but ants and all microforms of life, from just small to microscopic, do ants consider themselves small? Do they realize that they live in a world of giants? I don't think so. Their world is as familiar to them as ours is to us. Compared to the cosmic entities, we are not even microscopic. We are even smaller. The realization of that sent shivers down my spine. No wonder that the master of horror and science fiction Howard Phillips Lovecraft in his works 
addressed the theme of the insignificance of mankind in the face of the vast cosmos. And here we come to the main question of our discussion. What if our entire universe could be placed on the tip of a needle? What if our solar system is just an atom within a larger structure? On this basis, it is conceivable that entire world could exist within the atoms and particles that make up our reality. Such a viewpoint suggests that, as a perceptive person once observed, infinity may not actually be a limit. Indeed, it may not be. Our reality may exist at the subatomic level of an entirely different reality. Conversely, our subatomic sphere can serve as a receptacle for entire worlds. And this recursive pattern can continue indefinitely on both smaller and larger scales. This may seem surprising, but our task is to explore the surprising. The most interesting thing is that by looking at the known universe and observing the laws that operate in it, we can easily come to the same conclusion. Everything in the universe, from tiny particles such as atoms to huge celestial bodies and entire star clusters, has a common building block. The dream of the scientific world is to find a theory of everything. Exploring the relationship between the microcosm and the macrocosm is a key element in moving towards such a comprehensive theory. Reconciling quantum mechanics and classical physics will allow a new generation of scientists to grasp the true nature of our universe and what lies beyond it. Consider, for example, one of the prevailing theories of the origin of our universe, the Big Bang Theory. According to this theory, our universe arose from an incredibly dense but small singularity, which then expanded to encompass all known boundaries, a transition from small to huge. Does this concept agree with our current discussion of the microcosm and macrocosm? Yes, but a fundamental distinction must be made here. A point such as the singularity responsible for the Big Bang is not equivalent to an atom. Despite its small size, this singularity contained all the elements necessary to create the entire universe. And calling it an origin from a single atom is still not possible. There's also something called string theory, an excellent candidate as a theory of everything. This complex theory challenges the traditional view of the atom as a spherical object taught in school, and instead proposes the existence of strings or similar entities. The interactions between these vibrating strings cover a wide range of scientific phenomena, including the principles of classical physics, including gravity, as well as the field of quantum mechanics. However, string theory has vulnerabilities. While successfully explaining many phenomena, it faces difficulties when considering dark matter. However, there is no need to despair. Scientists are working painstakingly to integrate the concept of dark matter into string theory. At the end of 2018, Swedish scientists presented a new version of string theory, according to which our universe exists on the boundary of a constantly expanding bubble. This version departs from the traditional four dimensions, three spatial and one temporal, and suggests that our entire universe is essentially vibrations on the surface of this bubble. What happens inside the bubble or at a distance from it, remains a mystery. Such a perspective is truly mind-boggling. We are just one small civilization, just a speck in a tiny part of reality on the surface of this bubble, which itself may be a fragment of something infinitely larger. Perhaps our whole world is just a proton or quark, an insignificant fragment of reality. Why don't we experience this in any way? Does the individual atom that makes up your sunglasses realize that it is just one of countless atoms that make up plastic? But is it so necessary to have a definitive answer to this question? After all, we should only be grateful that our common vast house called the universe is full of such amazing mysteries. Discovering these mysteries is our task, and we hope you enjoyed our video. Please share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to show your support by liking and subscribing to our channel. See you soon.